My govan and Melonin and well met indeed. I am Arakea Garladirathan, the head of the modding team behind Divide and Conquer. And welcome back to Divide and Conquer as we continue on as the Ar Ardenaim. And we beat Linden. Now, um, it has been a little while since the last episode. Although, interestingly, I didn't save it properly at the end of the last one. But I don't think I've missed anything. Um, but I'm pretty sure that when the last episode ended, Imrazor was not standing there. And I'm absolutely tripping out over this. So I don't really know what I've done. Um, <laughs> I think I forgot to save it when I ended the episode last time. So I believe I had moved him to there. Yes, yes I had, because he was standing there, wasn't he? And Sakala the Wrathful was in the trees over there because I was moving him off to Buzzardoom. Yes. So if I built anything, I've forgotten to build it because I appear to have lost the last few moments of the last episode. <laughs> I don't know what I did then. Um, somebody said the music was too loud, and I explained in the comment my comment reply to them that unfortunately the music on the campaign map is significantly louder than the music on the battle map, and it's very annoying. Um, and I can try and get a balance right, but if it's a little too loud, um, I'd rather it were on the quieter side than the louder side for the music. So I've, I've tweaked that a little bit. Um, otherwise, though, we just we just need to kill Tor Historian, um, and then we can move in on Mithlon proper with the army that is currently led by our yes. Gimels or the Chivalrous. But that's not very good. I'm sure I have another one somewhere. Got the money for it. Ah, now I'm tripping. Maybe I don't. Oh, no, of course. Of course, of course, of course. Tor, the army that Gimelzor was leading oh, was man. mightily good um, and was cut down man for man by Tor Historian. We won, but we took heavy losses. So we are, in fact, at a point where we are retraining our grand and noble army, which is what we may have been doing. Now, I ended the last episode with 3895 as well, actually, so we are as where we are. Oh, yes, indeed. There's our retraining army coming through there. Our Menelos hasn't got anything called Willishar can take Belagar Halberdiers, which I believe you can because you get three free upkeep, four free upkeep. So do train those. And you're 12 turns away from getting proper units then. I think we're just going to have to throw units at this one, if I'm honest. Suduri is stagnating, which is why we're building those things. And we're getting an armory so that we can actually defend it. Um, I think it might be a case where what we're going to need to do is build an almost an, uh, a, um, an auxiliary force. So our Gimbalzor yes, will have Lord. the best units. Um, but we'll take the two yes, lowest Lord. generals, we'll give them a horde of units, and we'll send them in first. I think that's going to have to be our plan here. So, before we go, we don't want to waste the money that we've got. It is impossible for our captains to rebel against us. So, with, armed with that knowledge, oh, annoyingly, the roads here don't join up. This province doesn't get a road. Um, is that because there's no yes. bridge here? An order. Yeah. I'm wondering if perhaps it would be better, rather than a land bridge south of Dol Vorn, if it would actually be better if you can just cross the river north of Dol Vorn. Yes. And that should then command. theoretically connect Harland and Dol Vorn. But then there wouldn't be a road here. That's the arguable point. This is a real no man's land in the law. I mean, even Harlinden is heavily depopulated by the Third Age. And this land is even more so. And the mountains, arguably, in, in truth, although, we, of course, no depiction of Middle Earth is 100% accurate. Um, even Tolkien's own hand drawings, because he uses triangles for mountains. So it's anyone's guess how far they actually extend. But this is very much a no man's land. So it's probably arguable and almost correct to say that the roads should go from the north and this land here should be roadless. So actually it's probably an idea to keep it the same. Anyway, I'm jabbering and gibbering. Let's train some troops. So we just want to train everything we can, really. Um, your connection point will be at the dock or the bridge Good there, sorry. You guys go north as well. You can't train anything and Cor Willishar can't train anything yet. Neither can most places, to be honest. But the troops yes. that we have coming up should be enough. Lord, um, I don't know if we... If Tor Historian's going to attack us, we want to have the upper ground. And we also want to defend the Harland. I think we want troops there. So let's try and provoke him. Yes. Let's go and stand on the hill and say, Oi, you want some? End the turn. Uh, now, I've um, been in discussion with my, um, my campaign manager, my advisor. Um, 
Uh, And and by that, of course, uh, I mean um, my better half. And um, I'm hoping to bump up to four videos again a week. Um, well, there's the process on our house move is somewhat stagnant, and until we actually move in, I should be freer now, which would clear me for a few weeks, um, and then again I'll be busy when we actually move in. But um, so in the interim, I'm hoping to bump back up to four videos, um, which should hopefully see the start of the Lothlorien campaign sometime soon, um, at, or possibly just something else. Uh, but there's something else I think will come when I when I have moved into the house and I've got more time. But for now, I'm sticking with things that are simple, easy to record, don't require much groundwork, which is unfortunately why as well, a video type that I have long since abandoned, or not abandoned, but um, anyway, but there's some Sindar units here we need to watch out for, but otherwise I think this should be okay. Um, the law videos are asked about an awful lot, of course, and a very large chunk of the now 28,000-ish subscribers that we have, or last time I checked it was 27, like 900 and something. Oh, something like that, anyway. Um, the large majority of them are only subscribed to me because of the lore videos, which have, of course, not been uploaded for a considerable amount of time now. Um, because they take a long time to do, and my weekends are, my, <laughs> are the only free time I get. And I don't really like using an entire morning um, to do the lore videos. So I appreciate it's been a hell of a long time since I've even done one. Um, and I did say I was going to do shorter videos more often, rather than months between them but then they're an hour long um, unfortunately I've just not done anything but believe me when I say that I, I don't um, oh let's just bug everyone up here standing in a line for now um, I have no intention of abandoning the law video series I want to continue it um, and it's rather interesting that the fall of Gondolin standalone book is going to come out um, in August this year when the last law videos I did were about Gondolin so at least I don't have to uh, try and tie that in because we've already done that so that was good I tell you what, actually archers why don't you go there and then um... oh is this all standable land oh it is ah oh, but that isn't but that is Oh, bugger, no. Well, we can make them fight where we want, can't we? So, why am I worrying about any of that? Move to there. Get the warriors to curl up on that side. You guys get ready to plug that gap. 122 of you get ready to plug that gap. Archers. Let's just move you to, to there, maybe. Yeah, I think that'll be alright. Alright, one of our generals stand there and help them. And then we've got the defenders over this side. I think you guys probably should go in the line. And then the Nadu Tarek and the other three generals can come over here. Oh, and the savages, barely even human. Get them up. And there we are. Right, so I do hope to continue the lore videos. Um, I'm just kind of waiting, almost, not, I'm, we're just waiting to have more time, really. And also, to I need to really just sit down and have an actual think about the way I can take it. If, if, um, no, um, <laughs> that was, sounded awful. <laughs> I need to sit down and have a think about the direction in which I wish to take the lore videos. And whether or not I do want to just start doing bite-sized videos that are far more common. So, you want to learn about, I don't know... Um, let's say I can't even think of a, of a simple topic. This is why I really need to sit down and have a thought about it. Let's say that you're interested in the very little information that we have about Glorfindel. A talk about Glorfindel would likely last about 10-15 minutes if that. There's not much to say about him and but he's the kind of an example of those bite-sized topics. So it's really, really heavily focused on an a thing, a single aspect. Whereas the videos so far have been about the history of an entire nation, or or a large battle in detail, or or obviously the fall of Gondolin, the, a passage of time, um, or just wider concepts of the legendarium in general, such as the Valar, um, the Valar. Some absolute moronical idiot, yet again, came to my YouTube channel to leave one comment merely telling me that I'm pronouncing Valar wrong, because I'm saying Valar and not Valar. It just bloody does my nut in. But it's pronounced as if it is spelt V-A-R, Va, L-A-R, La, Valar. 
I hate it. I just bloody hate people who pull up pronunciation. It's my absolute worst bugbear. You might not be able to see the comment because I frequently delete those kinds of comments because they really, really do my nutting. And it's the only way that I can obtain some modicum of peace in this hellhole that is the internet. Anyway, I'm sidetracking. Um, so I, I wish to just kind of sit down and have a think about what I can do with the law videos. And if and I, or I suppose a better way is to gauge it is to just generally ask yourself. I presume that most people that watch the DAC videos or the, or the core followers, if you will, the, the four to six thousand of you who watch the DAC overviews and watch the DAC Let's Plays. I imagine you also probably do watch the um, law videos. And so the question would also go to you in that would you rather have more common law videos but they were on more niche subjects and they were not very long or would you rather that they were months between them and they dealt with grand sweeping topics although i suppose let's say for example that i did them every two months if i actually when i've moved out i'm into my own home i can then live my own life and and actually fit the law videos in at the minute fitting everything in my life in means that youtube has to take a bit of a second place but um so let's say i've moved out i've got all the time in the world and i do the law videos every two months but it's set, let's say it's an hour in length alternatively if i did the law videos say once every three weeks you would be able to get for argument's sake let's say you'd be able to get three of those in the space you would have got the one hour long one and the three of them would be between 10 and 20 minutes, which would make them, on average, about an hour as well. So it, you'd actually get the same amount of law content in the same time. You just It's just in the actual sitting. So you've come home from work and you've, for whatever reason, you particularly like listening to me ramble on. And you've chosen to watch a video that's an hour in length. Then um, you'd get that. You'd be able to get that. You'd have an hour of content to watch. Whereas if they were every 20 minutes, you'd get 20 minutes of content to watch every few weeks, for example. Um, so I don't know. It's because the bite-sized topics are much easier. For example, you could talk about Herogrim, the Sword of Theoden, and all that we know about that. I could talk about Glorfindel, you could talk about all sorts of things. Those little things like weapons and specific persons and a, a, a topic that has been asked for many, many times is just a general overview of what is different from the films to the books. Like, what are the substantial breaks from the book? And that is a very commonly asked for topic. Um, and so you could do things like that as well. So there's plenty of opportunity. And I, the more that I talk about it, to be honest, I realise it's been, it's been something like five months since the last law video. So the way that I'm doing it at the moment obviously isn't working. So I think manoeuvring to a smaller bite-sized chunk style video would be better. And maybe they actually, I, I, this is turning into a soundboard of me basically talking to myself. But Maybelly, Maybelly, new word I've just invented, maybe and probably joined together. Maybelly, it would be best to just actually do a 10 minute style video and see how it's received, to be honest. Uh, I think that might be the best bet. And then people can request more. And it's also 10 times easier to research a single specific thing than it is to research, for example, The Fall of Gondolin took me four times as long as it took to record just to make sure I was getting the facts right because it's in, I mean it's a big legendarium and, and uh, some bits of it interest me some don't anyway in terms of the actual battle we're doing much better this time and um, I would submit that is for the following reasons number one we have got a substantial hill buffering our army here really giving us a huge lift number two they don't have any cavalry that have been able to flank around the sides and take massively favourable odds against us uh, number three, most of their elites are actually dead. We claimed a lot of the elites in the last battle. And of course, uh, number four, although I think I might have said there were only two reasons and I'm now on number four. Number four, we actually have archers this time, which we didn't before. Um, and they you can't overestimate how useful archers are. Right, the time has come. No one's on defensive mode. Gimmel's or send the elixir out amongst the troops. I think this is coming to an end. Really get in there. The enemy are badly bloodied. They have lost half their men. All right, our archers finished a while ago. Their archers, as they are elves, continue on. Although our crossbows keep going. They're taking some people down. So Larry Swordman over there getting beaten. I don't know where the uh, where Tor Historian himself is, and I can't see unfortunately because he's in the numbers somewhere. Ah, I think he's just called the retreat. Oh, brilliant. They just ran straight into them. The oh, that's captured the enemy's oh, yes! 
That will teach the cowardly dog to turn tail and run. Yes, 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 yes. Allow me to also just state, uh, because again, the topic has come up, and, and this time from Wolferson. And Wolferson, you make a very valid point. In that, of course, I broke a house rule for this campaign to continue. When it got to the point where we were looking like we were going to be going to war with Isengard, I allied with Isengard because I knew they would beat us. And as I have repeatedly said, that is purely because, had I not, they would have beat us, the campaign would have ended. However, the campaign is very popular. It was, call it, if you will, a purely business decision to have broken my house rule. But if it makes you feel any better, I, I freely submit that I had lost this campaign. I had been beaten. When we were kicked Enemy out of Minhiriath... Oh, that was much victory. more favourable. When we were kicked out of Minhiriath, which is the land we currently now occupy, and obviously I was beaten back to my ships, and then I eventually came back and took Suduri. At that point that I then allied Isengard, I'm f I freely, hands up, submit, I lost the campaign. I'd been beaten. I was defeated. I was not good enough. I had stretched my armies too thin, I had run out of money, and I lost the campaign. However, by then resorting to the game's normal rules, I was allow able to then continue the campaign because it's bloody good fun and people are enjoying watching it. So that's why I did what I did, but I appreciate that you shouldn't break house rules. And if, for example, let's say, for example, I mean, I had many opportunities to ally Dunland and Bree, but I didn't because at that point the rules still came into effect. It's only when you really come to the precipice the very brink of your nation's defeat that I then had to sit back and think, do I want the campaign to continue purely for the purposes of YouTube and indeed my own enjoyment? Because I am actually really enjoying this campaign. Or do I continue to stick with my house rules and end this very popular campaign right here and now because my house rule has come to an end? And so I opted for option A, but I, as I say, I freely admit that I lost the campaign and we're only here because I did break one of my own rules. Uh, and also, on the subject of rules, just so that I can kind of remember for myself, really, when we begin the Lothlorien campaign, there will be house rules. And the house rules that we are going to opt for are as follows. Number one, there can only be one general per army. That is going to be a hard and fast rule. Only one general per army. And the other rule that I really, really, really liked is that he can only control as many troops as the number of command stars he has. So a general like Círdan, for example, who has 10 command, can govern the full retinue. 19 other units with his bodyguard. A general who only has one star, for example, like Nimrubin, he would only be able to have two units alongside his own bodyguard unit. Those are the only house rules. Um, or I believe as well I am going to go for um, a standalone where we, we will we will fight alone. We won't. Um, but that one I, I like to play a little by ear because again, as you've seen here, by allying Isengard I managed to survive. And had I not, I would have died. So, um, <laughs> but those are the two hard and fast. There will be only one general per army, and they will only be able to govern as many troops command. as they have command stars will, times two. As you wish. I'm very tempted to, although we don't have anyone to replace them. But obviously, we, there's three good units right there. Oh, and it's happy if we take them, so leave them there for now. They're only a turn away, but we will take those when the time comes. Oh, we can get an army barracks here. In comes with our Farazans faithful. I heard someone as well, saw someone talk. To, um, allow me to just eat my words a little more. Uh, somebody was mentioning in the comments that when we fight Isengard, which I really do hope to do, I've not done a massive, major empire on empire fight in a Ooh, long time. My um, um, Captain Mythfinden. Sorry, Mythfinden, but you come. are to die. Let's fight this one ourselves. Uh, when we come to actually fight Isengard, we will need cavalry. This has been stated in the comments. I heartily agree. And the Arad and I am, of course, the one weakness we have given them is they have no cavalry themselves, except for one very rare unit that can be trained from various Numenorean heritage locations. Now, we have to attack Isengard and Dunland for those heritage locations, I'm afraid, because the locations that we are near that we can get them Oh, is my mouse not? Oh, group's in the wrong button. There we are, sorry. Um, the heritage places that we can get them are Londair and the two Tharbads, which are currently held by our enemies. I wonder what they'll do here, because they've got archers. In fact, most of their army are archers. If I send my own archers in, I feel like we'll just they'll just get killed.
run at them. Right, just just take it for a moment. Just take it. Yes. If we continue like this, we will smash the enemy. Ah, oh, my Thindon has already gone down. That was a, a massacre, I think. 17152. <laughs> dear, oh dear. 38, 36. Well done, men. I mean, well done indeed. Solid win. Uh, so, um, in the interest, I also, um, I'm recording this on Thursday, the 12th of April, and I currently actually have, I currently have, it's not going to change, I have Friday, the 13th of April, off from work. I have it booked off. That's tomorrow. So, there will be four videos next week. Um, and I'm yet undecided in my head as to which one will be the fourth. Um, uh, it depends how much time I have for the weekend and what um, I get up to with all this free time. Because uh, I'm also thoroughly enjoying playing Guild Wars 2 again at the moment, I'm afraid. Um, and I'd like to continue playing that. I feel like it's a nice reprieve. But I will make sure there are four videos next week. And they won't just be three Ardenaeum and a, an overview. There will be one overview and there will be two Ardenaeum. But then I don't know what the fourth yes, slot will be. With honor. And um, if indeed Lord, there might even be one additional on top of that as well. So we'll see. Right, now we don't want to... Now we're in a little bit of a tricky situation. We don't want to stoke the ire of Linden. Um, we want to make sure that Kirdan stays the there. So we don't want to cross the... Go around the, the tip of the cape. Um, because I think that will bring Kirdan to us. Kirdan's army is really powerful. We need to be at a two-to-one situation to take him out. That's what we're aiming for. That's the goal. Our arrow is loosed and the target is two-to-one. Uh, if we can My get Lord. it. Yes. I'm not that confident. Exhaustion continuing later. Oh, I will take those, though. Oh, you can only give me one more and then we're into the next realm. Oh, you've got loads of money, though. Um, you can train four units at a time, can't you? So there we go. Are they all train in one turn? Your will, my lord. We've got a fort, actually. Command. There's one there, isn't there? But that's in Isengard's lands. I don't think they'll like that. Suduri's so bringing... Go on, then chuck them in as well. Even trash will kill something. My lord. Your will, my lord. As you wait. Orders. I'm really loving playing this game with the graphics up high and uh, a computer that can do it all. I'm really enjoying that. Um, well, we've got the money for a few more buildings, so you might as well go for some things where you can. Oh, and you can retrain. Oh, I'll take your crossbows. Yes, please. And I'll take the Corsair Warriors and those two, which should then pop in. You can also now go to the bridge then. This is our recruitment point. If you're interested, if you didn't know, you can hold the Alt key and then right click on the game world. And that will then set a rally point for your forces. And to remove it, you just return and right click back on the town they came from. Uh, if you're wondering how I'm doing that trickery. Oh, we're really coming along in King's Men here, aren't we? Yeah, that's doing very well. Yes, I'm really tempted to move up and stand on the bridge, but unfortunately we don't best the elves. Even in, the the, in, in, no, in, in every category that we have with the elves, we don't best them. The only time we can really give them an actual fight an is our elites. The, the Arad and I have really powerful late game elite troops. Um, oh, I know what I was going to do. Yes. My Lord. yes. I was going to assist in the downfall of Bree, of course. How many th uh, spies have I got, actually? I've got another. I've got two more, haven't I? Yeah, there's Arnuzir there. Zorzagar. We don't need you there anymore, Zorzagar. So, Arnu Balkan, you move down and keep an eye on Mithlond. And Zorzagar, you head over to Forlond and find out what you can over there. And you keep watching for Michael. Uh, Michel Delving, sorry. Make sure they don't get anything. And we'll just swoop in and take Under Towers. Yes, my lord. As you command. As our armies recruit, our troops move, troops. and we prepare for the final assault. Once we take down Mithlond, the plan is as Be follows: kill Linden. Yeah, I just said that, didn't I? Tautology. So after we defeat Linden, we will attack the dwarves of Erud Luin in something we hope to call the Blitzkrieg. That's what we shall name it. In, and, and by that I mean we're going to try and rush the mountains as fast as humanly possible. And take the towns there away from Eridluin as quick as we can. 
Ah, Harland upgraded. Yes! The men of Umbar. Oh, the men of the Aradanaim are here. And the town is up and it's ours. Terrible free upkeep. Oh, it's because I can't train that troop, actually, isn't it? Cues are still, but we're still making money. And Lithonian I is coming around the edge you, there. My enemy. Lithonian. That's not good. Um, but we've got our army moving, haven't we? Marshalling. Keep everybody yes. chugging forwards. I think that's going to have to be the, our limit, though. Yeah, and if you're not training, we're not going to train you. Because we are. I think once this army actually assembles in full, we will no longer make money. But then Undertowers will help bridge that gap, won't it? Oh, and all four of them are training. Excellent. This is a sound army. We need someone to lead it. Should we send Gimelzor back? No. I tell you what we'll do. We'll send Balakan back yes, because he is A, our faction heir, so let's get him out of harm's way. And B, he's also our second best general, yes. I think. Making camp here. Oh, wow. Dunland really throwing it hard on Bria. Your orders, my lord. To battle. We shall prevail. Rod. <laughs> yes. Rod might be honourable, but he's the yes, last. My lord. They'll only hold out for two turns, but they'll rise up against us. I'm, I'm almost certain of it. My lord. Try and keep an eye on where Lithonian's going to go. You keep heading over to Forlorn. They've only got dirt paths. Even in Mithlon, they've only got dirt paths. Buzzra, how far away are you? Four, five. Eight. That's not. Oh, we're not. I don't think we're actually going to lose that much money when our army assembles. Call cool, Wishar, can you replace your garrison yet? No, you can't. Balakan will return and he'll lead this army. Your orders, my lord. Ah, cool. Willishar has proper roads. Tomorrow. Needs to be... Oh, it is a stronghold. Oh, it's because we haven't got the Master Masons at all. Ugh, idiot. This is another tier of roads we can get, but we need the Masons Guildhouse and we haven't got it yet. No, but it's too late now. I mean, it'll be, it'll be like 20 turns before we can upgrade that and we'll never get that point. All right, let's see if Bree attack us and see where Lithonian's going to go. Leaving the army. He's gone off into the darkness somewhere. I wonder if Harland or Basradum is more important to Mithlond at the moment. I keep calling them Mithlond, but that's the name of the city. The Grey Havens, of course, is their actual name. They are just ploughing straight down. It looks like Buzzardum might be their target. Oh, no, they haven't reached the break in the road yet. So they still, uh, at this point, they could go left or right. We don't know. There's nothing we can do over there. No troops we can train. Oh, someone became an architect. Well done. Argon got an archery range. Ah, oh, Narduba Web finally become available just as we no longer are building anything. Oh, and Dolvorn upgraded. Yes. I'll take a grain exchange. Money is money. That is a sound army. Wish. That really is. Especially when that he arrives in a couple of turns. Command. Yes, my lord. With now, honor. they might be able to form up and move up in time to, to beat Lithonian. I, um, I doubt it, but maybe. Oh, Forlond is... Oh, Forlond. Fall on this garbage. Have we still got... Um... Yes, we have. Sackle Thor. Can't retrain you, though, because we can't train the ship type you are, but... Ships ready. One wonders if perhaps this army would be better served sailing up and taking Fall on. Uh, but then... Ah, oh, then we could... Oh, if we did that, do you think Kirdan would move west? At which point we could then attack Mithna, but then he'd come back. And he'd only be a turn away. He's only two turns away from Forlond and a turn from Mithlond. So he'd be able to get to Forlond. Oh, I don't know. Because what I'm basically thinking is we could siege Forlond, which we'd have to do for one turn, which would pull him away. We build a, a, a ram, a battering ram, and then hopefully he will then only make it to about here on his second turn, at which point we then siege Mithlond. He then turns around, but in that time we've then got a siege ram and we attack both at the same time and beat Linden without ever having to fight Kirdan. Ah, but then Kirdan's army will go rebel and they will attack us. So we have no we have no choice. We're defeating that army whether it's it held by Linden or whether it's held by the rebels. You. Which is annoying. Uh, I don't want to attack under towers in case they've built an armory there because I'm pretty sure you can get it in a village. Um, I'm, so I am waiting for them to rise up, which they will do. But in anticipation of that, and despite this episode being slightly shorter, um, I'm going to end it there, I believe. 
So the next episode will start with the Siege of Undertowers, and then we'll see what Lithonian's going to do. And then hopefully in the next episode we'll see pretty much the demise of Linden. But we have just enough time to take a look at the world again, see if anything underwater has happened. Oh, good God. Mordor have utterly blown up. Dorwinian have been kicked out of Dorwinian by Mordor of all factions. Gondor now only have Atheland. Um Their spawn army, though, would have spawned somewhere over here. Oh, they've got Kyrandros still. Oh, well, that's interesting. Um, Dol Amroth down to just go well, Tophilus and Dol Amroth still. Mordor just throwing everything at them. But Oh, there's Gondor's reinforcing army. Imlach. The final push of the men of Gondor to hold their home. Isengard no longer have any enemies and are now just standing around doing nothing. Which is always nice. Similarly, the Misty Mountains just don't want to take Karas Galathon, so they're just doing nothing. And... That's about it, really. Cand have moved up into Rune. Mordor have just taken everything. Bree is still held by Isengard. Of course it is, though. The Northern Dundine have no reason to attack them. They've got their own fish to fry as Angmar slowly loses ground. But it's just... Look at these three huge nations. We need to own much of what Ered Lewin has to be able to go up against the might of Isengard. Who knows when and if we can do that. I'd, it's the problem is, though, that the AI, once the enemy gets to a certain point, the AI has no desire or inclination to attack them. So, for example, Isengard and Dol Guldur are currently not allies. Uh, and they could they could throw they could attack each other, but they both consider each other to be too large to um, to actually go for it. So they won't do that. Anywho, as I say, that will be the end of this episode. So thank you very much for watching, if indeed you have. Do stay tuned then as we progress further into this campaign and indeed introduce something new. And uh, until we speak again, Navarna den per and farewell. And I'll save it this time. <laughs>